protect yourself and your family from unexpected challenges. Consider accident only income protection. Click the link in the description to find out more. In King Media in association with the Riyadh season. Uh, Spencer, it's uh, the next morning, he would not had a lot of sleep, but I, we, we did speak to you last night about the fight in Ophidi and Ghanu. Mm -hmm. It was a quick mm -hmm. rushed interview, but I just wanted to get a bit of a breakdown from you. Mm -hmm. First thing I've got to ask you, Spence, is, I was just asking you off camera, why and how was Francis and Garno able to have like such a foothold in that fight? Just kind of break it down for me from you know, a boxing perspective. Uh, I, would, I would say it's, it's a lot of things. A lot of things has got to be down to Tyson Fury. And a lot of things like where Tyson Fury usually trap guys. We saw he'd he done it really well in uh, when he fought Deontay Wilder. He'll faint, then throw the jab, faint, then he'll double up the jab. Um, but that's just with one striking hand, like your 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 your, your leading hand, which is your left hand if you're an orthodox fighter. What Francis Ngannou is very very good at doing is like he's used to not only getting. You got to think about it, there's eight punches that can go to your head from your left or your right hand, right? Eight punches. Francis Ngannou, I say Ngannou, Ngannou has been used to dodging elbows. He's been used to avoiding knees. He's been used to, you know what I mean, spinning kicks, all these kind of things he's used to the head. So you, us knowing like boxing compared to, to MMA is actually limited combat sport, right? It's a beautiful sport. It's a sport that I love emphatically, right? But in the fact of the requirements, what you can go do, it's still limited. So that helped him, but not only that, but I believe that, um, in, and Garland is just a natural athlete. And if you look at him and you look, my friend, I went into his change room afterwards. I couldn't believe the size of bro. You know what I mean? And so those things, and not only that, you're in training camp and they, everyone was saying, I was with Sugar Hill and John Fury just after the fight, we had a good chat. And, and he had a 12 week camp and he was saying like he was on it. And I remember like uh, when he was here and he, Tyson was, he, he, he looked on it. But when you're, when you're in with someone who's got more to lose than what you have been in with. So Tyson Fury's narrative has always been like, right, I, look how I was raised, I, I beat, you know I mean, mental depression, I, I, you know I mean, I beat the mental health, I got, you know I mean, suicidal thoughts, all these kind of things. And you've had a man that has literally come from nothing. Do you get that part, sir? You know what I mean? Boxing comedian know what it's about because you, you know the struggles, you know the struggles. So someone's come from nothing and they say, I've got nothing to lose and I'm going to grab this thing with two hands. And he did grab this with two hands because he knew that he couldn't really box with Tyson Fury. So he said, right, I'm going to keep everything compact. And this has got to be uh, massive props to his trainers and, and also to, to the instructions of what uh, Mike Tyson were like. Mike Tyson old boxing. Historically, he's on point, man. Seriously, I've sat, I debated hours with Mike Tyson. He, he's on point. So, you got to think. We can look at the formula of which Conor McGregor did um, six years ago when he, well, sorry, eight years ago when he fought, when when he fought Floyd Mayover, and Conor McGregor never looked natural in the stuff that he was doing. He looked like a fish out of water, right? But Francis Ngannou originally started boxing first. And when you look at big guys, big guys, they're, they're big guys in the UFC, those heavyweight guys, they, they're usually strikers. They're not taking you down to the ground. And they're usually strikers. And he just knew to keep things compact, and he did that. He did that. He scored the knockdown in round three, which, right? <laughs> but. How, how shocked were you when that moment happened? Because that silenced everyone. Bro? bro? Oh, also, massive big up to Spencer Brown for hooking up my ringside seats. There was a little bit of confusion in the beginning part with my seats, but thank you very much, Mr. Brown um, from Gold Star Promotions. Got to big you up hard. You, you're a cool guy. You're my namesake as well, but everyone knows I'm better looking. But like, so when, when, when he got knocked down, it was something like 
the Saudis didn't have anyone who they were siding with. They were like Tyson Fury. Yeah, we're going to cheer for you at this present moment. But we like the backstory of Nganu. But when Nganu scored the knockdown, all of the Saudis were on Nganu's side. <laughs> right? That's just how it goes. You know what I mean? That is just how it goes. So, but I was shocked. I know I asked you earlier, like, we've seen Tyson, like, if you talk about the boxing side of it, Tyson makes, does feints and people fall for the feints and he comes in. But in Ghana, what you saw was a guy that just kind of stood his ground and uh, basically was willing to trade. He was like punching with him. He was like trying to, in, he was kind of draw Tyson. Tyson was trying to draw him in and he was drawing Tyson in and he was like countering left. It seemed like the, the countering his right hand with the left hook was like, part, did you pick up on that? Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. I, I, Is that a good game plan for Tyson Fury? Uh, it was, but also we got to see his like, <sighs> when when he was in the fight, right, and the things that he was doing, right, I don't this know. This flies crazy. Yeah, I know this flies on it, right. When 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 Tyson Fury would would punch, Ngannou would try to punch with him, which is not easy to do because Tyson Fury is he's very agile for a big guy, right, and he's very flexible and he's athletic, but Francis and Ngannou is he's, he's crazy athletic. He's, he is. He's, he's crazy athletic. Crazy athletic. And it was a close fight as well. Right? In a 10-round fight, it was a very close fight. It wasn't that uh, Ngannou was a hands-down winner. Because that's I'll be lying to you if I said that. There was rounds where even after the knockdown, Ngano didn't really do anything. He didn't really throw any punches, but then Tyson was like flicking the jab out. Yeah. Uh, how do you think them rounds must have been yeah, scored? So, exactly. So what Tyson Fury is doing is is he's he's stealing the rounds, but he's not going with the narrative. With the narrative is like you're not meant to be stealing the rounds. You're meant to be dominating the rounds. So because you're not dominating the rounds, and we're so used to seeing you dominate rounds and outbox guys who are professional boxers, he didn't do that. So because he didn't do that, we're thinking like, oh, the narrative is let's go with the moral victor. And the moral victor last night was Francis Ngannou because he wasn't meant to do what he did. He wasn't meant to do it. We was looking at it as a joke fight and maybe Tyson Fury kind of took his eye off the ball. And he may not, he ain't going to admit that to no one because he was talking all hyped and like, we're in this, I was fortunate enough to stay in the same hotel as him, got to talk to him and, and he was going like, right, don't worry, I'm going to smash this guy. And it wasn't, you can't, it's sometimes you can't get up for things. Like he wasn't up for, he wasn't. Because somewhere in the back of your mind, in the subconscious, it's like, he's a UFC guy, come on, man, I'm going to play with this guy, man. I've been with Deontay Wilder, right? But... That was a in, incredible performance, and that you know what you know what when they say like um, um, life imitates art, and vice versa. What we saw yesterday was actually Rocky. If you watch the first Rocky movie, right, right, the first the first Rocky movie, uh, it was Apollo Creed, who's heavyweight champion of the world, and his opponent pulled out, and he said, right, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna get a stand in, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do it for Thanksgiving, and he finds Rocky Balboa to fight the Italian stallion. Sounds like a damn horror movie or something, right? So he, that's what he did. So he got in there with Inganu, and it was meant to be something that was gonna be, should have been like a relative walk in the park and like know your discipline. And my guy just tore up the script, that was it. And the other factor we've seen is obviously there's been a lot of online reaction. Uh, I've seen Eddie Hearn last night. He, Eddie basically said that he felt Ngannou won by two rounds and he also said that AJ would stop Fury within six and he also suggested that he'd be happy for AJ to fight Ngannou. So I just want to get your opinion on them three viewpoints. Um, does AJ stop Fury in six rounds based on what you saw last night? Uh, would you like to see Ngannou AJ? How does it go? Um... The worst thing for anyone is for Francis Ngannou to stay in boxing, right? And then properly learn boxing, be around boxing. That could be the worst thing possible because what I saw yesterday was somebody who's compact, who's agile, who can punch and can also take a punch. So when Eddie Hearn's saying about uh, putting AJ in with Ngannou or putting AJ in with Fury, you know, what we saw last night was somebody in, in Francis Ngannou's mind's actually white. 
You know what I mean? I'm not questioning uh, Anthony Joshua's mind, um, but I want Anthony Joshua to know this. You know what I mean, I've 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 been blessed to be living in a five-bedroom home, and I've I've got like a little kind of attic bit in my house. I could put. I could put a mattress there, I could close it up, it could be a dark room and you could pay me two grand a night. How about that one? <laughs> we need the money. <laughs> if AJ, you know, if I don't know if uh, we're going to speak to Spencer in, in a bit, but if they made some Spencer sort of... Brown, Spencer yeah. Brown. If it's worth saying that. Spencer Brown, if, if he made an offer, because obviously he's, he's holding the keys to the fights in Saudi at the moment, but if he went and made an offer to Eddie Hen for AJ and Garnu, based on what you've seen recently, how could you see that fight unfolding? Put you on the spot. You have put me on the spot. Uh, I think the black guy wins. How about that one? Is it a hard fight for Anthony Joshua? Do you think it's uh, like, does he deal with Ngannou easier uh, compared to how Tyson? Because no, obviously. No, no, no. Listen, of what I saw yesterday, right? Of what I saw yesterday, Ngannou will give anybody problems. And Ngannou went in with the, the lineal heavyweight champion of the world, right? And a lot of people are saying that he actually won that fight. So I'm just going to keep this thing. Dead straight and honest. If Ngannou goes in with anyone, he has a possibility of coming out victorious. And that is the truth, Ruth. Interesting thoughts there. I appreciate your time. Uh, just the last thing, um, you know, people that haven't seen it, please watch the video that we put up on Instagram a few days ago of the gala dinner. Spencer, you was there surrounded by superstars and uh, I don't, I, I'm going to uh, praise myself. I think I put together something pretty amazing no, no, that no, kind of no, no. magnified you, you, the uh, event. Bro, you put something absolutely fantastic together um, you know being out in Saudi Arabia alhamdulillah it's been incredible you know, being out in Riyadh being and seeing everything that's gone on here being at a dinner where all the legends were there you turn around it was like you died and went to boxing heaven I'm just gonna be real and and the, and the video that you put together if you haven't seen it go and watch it um, massive big up to and, and props to Turkey Al Sheikh for 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 bringing this here, you know I mean, everyone down in Gold Star for extending the hospitality to myself and Baba Tundi Ajay from the fighters, right? Um, it, it was it was incredible, and like this could be the epicenter of boxing um, if they were to properly stick at it, and I hope that they do stay at it and stick at it. This really could be something special. We got Mike Tyson opening his gym out here as well. I'm looking forward to going to that later on today. Um, it's just been a fantastic, fantastic time. I've really enjoyed it here, you know. Definitely so. Um, big up Mr. Tuki Al Sheikh as well, especially uh, for trusting Boxing King Media to create the content in the last few weeks. And uh, Spencer, it's been a pleasure speaking yeah, to you. Cool. I'll see you I'm back in the add, UK. No, no, we we'll see you. May I just add, lastly, um, support human rights, okay? And to express humanity is just to be human. Right? You, you, you don't have to be Muslim to, to be against atrocities in the world. Okay? Because you can wave a LGBTQ um, uh, uh, um, flag and nobody says anything about it. You could uh, be out and you wave for Ukraine flag and nobody's not going to say anything about it. They're happy, they're supporting it. But dare you wave a Palestinian flag and people look at you weird and that's something that's very, very double standard. I think it's absolutely disgusting. And as I said, as, as a Muslim, I believe that the Ummah is one body. So if one, if one part's hurting, the whole body's hurting. So we should act as a solidified, unified body. That's what we should do as human beings. I don't care about your race, your religion, your sexual preference. You back what's right. You know what I mean? Human life is human life. And I'm a supporter of human life. Um, let me just say this to anyone. I just heard a story from one of my brothers, right? And it was an amazing story that actually made me cry. And I want people to realize this part here. If you don't step forward, you're always going to be in the same place. If you don't go after what you want, you'll never have it. Go after what you want. Ask, so the answer will be a yes or a no, but if you don't ask, you're always going to receive a no. Grab this thing with two hands. Life is not a joke. And life, is, we, we, we do things and we're living and we think we're going to live forever. We're not. We're here for short moments, short periods. Do your best to touch someone's life. 
do your best to be respectful, do your best to be honourable, do your best to show love to your friends, to your family, to your loved ones. Do your best, because that is all we're here for. And in all of that, wake up in the morning and say thank you that you've woken up. Because I know too many stories of people who have gone to sleep and not woken up. Too many stories of people being ill and, 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 and can't do it and then their whole life changes at a blip and they're the breadwinner of their houses and now they can't, they're struggling, right? Then life is a struggle. But when things go bad, don't go with them. Keep on pushing forward, put God first and you can never ever come second. Peace, two fingers, I'm out. Big up, massive big up to Boxing King Media, thank you. Yeah, echo them words as well, I hope the world educates themselves and uh, learns about what is really going on and uh, there's a lot of innocent civilians that have obviously lost their lives uh, because of what you've just said and hopefully people can educate themselves and uh, draw uh, a common sense conclusion. Thank you Spencer. Protect yourself and your family from unexpected challenges. Consider accident only income protection. Click the link in the description to find out more. Thank you.